this is a 70 days old baby born at term 3.5 kg birth weight and uh, baby was uh, fed breastfed and uh, there was no new, new new problems in the newborn period it was discharged on the third day baby passed meconium within 24 hours urine on the day one itself and thereafter he was passing urine with good stream and normal urine color he was passing motion daily and that was also normally colored child was breastfeeding actively there was no vomiting and there was no excessive cry and uh, he was steadily gaining weight he had the first dose of vaccines on the at the six weeks everything been happily till then and then mother noticed there was a gradual distension of the abdomen apart from that uh, there was no other problems she consulted the local pediatrician and uh, he thought it was abdominal distension maybe due to feeding problems and he was they were advised to give proper burping but the distension didn't subside it continued to increase and for the last uh, three four weeks it is increasing size and that was why baby was bought here at the time of admission vitals were stable was not dyspnea circulatory status was okay fully conscious and the development was appropriate for the age 70 days and the weight was a little on the lower side mother was complaining that occasional low grade fever was not there but there was no documented fever there was no general examination special findings baby was normally appearing no dysmorphism there was uh, uh, no other skin changes no rashes uh, no color changes and the most notable was this abdominal distension the points we need to know abdomen definitely is distended umbilicus normal a little slit like there's a stretching sideways so it's a little smiling umbilicus is there. but the creases are not it's not uh, uh, normal it's not protruding what more staring is the distension is confined to this area the hypochondrium epigastrium a little bit to the left hypochondrium and this massive this much part umbilical and a little in the upper iliac area also but what is classical is this left side ilia the hypogastrium and this part is not distended and this also is not distended so this is one of the most important uh, points which will help us in the clinical evaluation of such a case there are a few more general exam the findings on the abdomen we'll come to that apart from that the lower chest was normal no dyspnea in drawing skin was normal nipple was normal yes abdominal distension is the main finding how will you go forward how will you analyze anybody with an abdominal most important thing is to answer is it a generalized dissension or a localized one so in this case it's a localized one that too the, the area of right hypochondrium epigastrium and right umbilical air part the other parts are not distended so if it was a generalized dissension we all learn 5f fat fluid flatus fecal matter fetus so the last thing is out of question in a pediatric age group the other things an obese child uh, azeitic situation and uh, distension that also is occasionally we see in a Hirschsprung disease the colonic distension massive abdominal distension can be there in, in, in Hirschsprung is classical one and sometimes uh, that can also lead to fecal matter chronic constipations so all these things lead to generalized distension and suppose in this case and other situation where one part of the abdomen only is enlarged so it can be one of the organs enlarged in the abdomen it can be large liver it can be large spleen it can be kidney on this side that side both sides or 
sometimes an ovarian mass or sometimes a bladder distended so one of these organs in the abdomen getting enlarged there can be some situations where a mass occurring deposits like your lymph node enlargement lymphomas non hodgkins lymphoma some other situations the neoplastic mass is not developing from the organ just one point useful in the case of diffuse abdominal distension umbilicus umbilicus is a very useful thing so if this is the shape of the umbilicus your umbilical well is normally the that means it is fat so all the other situations where the intra abdominal organs or flat as a fluid or whatever even in pregnancy the umbilicus will be stretched and protruded if this is a situation you can relax it is fat of the obesity so this is other situation where something is there inside can be any of the things which we discussed so what's your conclusion from this case abdomen and distension is the it is in this area most likely this is from the liver this must be a massive hepatomegaly and uh, we clinically examine we found that the liver was enlarged it was diffuse enlargement a firm in consistency and the margins firm sharp margins and uh, the span was almost or uh, 18 cm or so 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 in a 70 days old baby very early hepatomegaly what you need to know is what is the reason for the liver enlargement the basically there are two situations one of the situation there is a problem with the liver function disturbance the other situation liver function is maintained but there is an organomegaly functional disturbance evidence can occur when the hepatocyte cells are damaged injured or there will be canalicular obstruction so in those situations you get a sign in the general examination in the form of uh, many of the evidence of cellular function disturbances like coagulation factor disturbance can can be bleeding will be in metabolism there can be jaundice hypoalbuminemia there be synthetic functions and edema will be there and in the extreme situations hepatic coma situations and that that's the worst of the situations the other group the liver is enlarged but the cells are intact and the function is maintained and that means there is something infiltrating and the liver is getting enlarged but the cell function is maintained there are lot many examples in different age group there are different in an younger age group of this uh, 70 days and all you need to consider some of the storage disorders which infiltrate in between the cells are unharmed like your glycogen storage disorders fatty infiltration there are many there are metabolic disorders that you need to consider it is not a storage metabolic disorders disturb most of the situation cell and cellular injury will be the and there you get the evidence of the functional derangement like the galactosemia fructosemia thyrosinemia all these are examples of the metabolic liver disorders where cells are injured you get the functional disturbance and you get the markers of the injury like your transaminase ldh all the other markers can be the so that is the point which you need to look for in the evaluation to decide which way to move so general examination is there any evidence of a functional derangement that's why we search for evidence there is no puffy face here eyes are clear no jaundice and see there is no edema so there is no hypoalbuminemia there is no bilirubin metabolism disturbance there is no blood bleeding manifestations child is normal higher functions are normal 
so it's a liver enlargement which is not producing any problem with the liver cell injury so what are the pathologies maybe it's a storage or infiltration infiltration what other infiltration can happen there is a possibility of a malignant infiltration so you get the same picture in a case of a leukemia lymphoma and all infiltrating in between the cells cells are not injured that's why you don't get jaundice you won't get a functional derangement in any case of leukemia rarely if it blocks the biliary tree you can get jaundice otherwise infiltrative disorders spares the liver function again localized masses abscess and all you see function is normally maintained because for the maintenance of the function a little bit of a cells are enough if it is focal or multifocal the function may be retained now comes one of the interesting observations here see there are dilated veins obvious here dilated veins obvious here dilated veins how to evaluate and uh, come to a conclusion there is no dilated veins here this also is another area which you need to consider and you need to check is there any dilated veins seen around the umbilicus is there any dilated veins going down so how will you evaluate this thing one thing see the distribution of the dilated veins is it in this area only in the upper part below how is the shape and uh, distribution of this uh, veins and the second thing is the flow so how will you check the flow for that very very important thing is choose a vein which is distended which is the and the segment of the vein where there is no branching this is a vein where there is a branching so it should not be including this exclude the branch and non branching segment so this is how you choose and this is a non branching segment you keep two fingers and this is a segment where there is no branch joining and you try to milk it like this so if it is milk it's empty you release it so how fast it is coming and filling and the other way now you milk down and see the rate of flow this upward flow it is empty it is filling up fast in the, when this part was released that means the flow is upwards that's how you assess the flow then decide if there is a flow upwards what are the possibilities upward flow there are two possibilities it can be from the umbilicus upwards a portal vein obsession produce a venous flow upwards at the same time downwards and this will be the direction that is it's caput medusae there is another possibility the upward flow can be an ivc obsession it's coming down and going up so when there is an upward flow there are two possibilities it can be an ivc obsession or a portal vein obsession so how will you differentiate very 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 important you need to check the vein is there a vein and what is the flow if it is a ivc obsession the flow will be upward above the umbilicus here also a vein below the umbilicus also upward that means it is an ivc obsession in a portal the flow will be like this here and the flow will be down here that means it's a portal so that's how so there is another possibility if there is an svc obsession what will be the situation the flow will be down in a portal situation also if you are looking here the svc obsession it will be down like this in short in if there is a flow upward below the umbilicus and above the umbilicus that means it's an ivc obsession the other way 
the flow above the umbilicus is down and below also down that means it's an SVC obsession a, a flow below the umbilicus upwards it's not portal hypertension above the umbilicus downward that's not portal hypertension so that's how you come to a conclusion the the obsession is either is it from the portal or is it IVC or SVC here in this case a little bit of confusion was there there was not much of distension distant veins obvious from here we're not sure which one it was obvious here and there was no veins here and there not much of veins down so we are not sure but what exactly was the reason for this anastomotic pathway so what way this distended vein helped us so we have analyzed the possibilities we considered the possibility of a storage but just because you are getting this vein you excluded it's very very unlikely to be there in a case of a storage disorder unless it leads to portal hypertension and uh, this caput medusa here the spleen is not enlarged and uh, there is no vein down so very unlikely that's a point possibility arguing more towards malignancy and next finding which we checked for the auscultation of the liver for brewing we couldn't find any brewing in this case so we are stuck what was the possibility and uh, we plan to do two things is there any biochemical marker for a malignancy so the possibilities of malignancy like hematological malignancy in this age group is uh, something neuroblastoma the other one is arising from the liver itself hepatoblastoma these are the possibilities but the child was not pale there was no bone tenderness no bony defects no lymph nodes nothing was there so possibility of neuroblastoma was less and other hematological malignancies also less because there was no bleeding manifestations there was no uh, uh, this thing petechia purpura and we did a peripheral smear that was within normal limits the abnormal blood cells was not the platelets were normal then we went ahead with the imaging this was the imaging just see see the same mass in the liver So, what is the final diagnosis? It is a case of hepatoblastoma. And uh, we couldn't get the results of uh, alpha beta protein. Without delay, we sent the patient to uh, regional cancer center.